This is Steve Ridgell, and I was listening to my really good friend Kevin Batten teach uh, the other night to our Jesus Journey class, and we, we were talking about eating together, the power of Christians eating together. And he was teaching from a book, actually, of another really good friend of mine, Tim Archer, uh, called Starting or Restarting with Jesus. And it's just giving fundamental things about spiritual growth and life, uh, either when you come back to following Jesus or starting to follow Jesus. But they were talking about the power of eating together. And so as I was reading Tim's book, listening to Kevin, I, I was struck by how many prohibitions there were in the Bible. Uh, how many just, it's just mentions of people that weren't allowed to eat with other people. Egyptians who couldn't eat with other people. Israelites who wouldn't eat with other people. You know, in, in the New Testament, people that wouldn't eat together because it's detestable. Uh, things about how you can't even come in our home. We know you Jews will not come in the home of Gentiles and all this people that just would not eat together. It, now, you you get exactly where I'm already going. That's all over our world today. Sometimes it's groups that won't eat together. Now, everybody, if you're old enough, you certainly remember in the South, uh, years and years and years ago, when you had a colored section and a white section, they weren't allowed to eat together. And, of course, everybody remembers junior high, middle school, sometimes even up into high school when the cool kids wouldn't eat with the not cool kids. The athletes would only eat together. The math nerds would only eat together. And on and on and on and on and on it went. And I kept thinking that's one of the most truly remarkable things about Jesus is that Jesus says, here's how I know my people are one. Eat together. Now, it doesn't spell it out that way in Scripture, but even the whole fundamental point of communion together, sitting around the table, uh, sitting in worship together, taking the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus together. All races, are all nationalities from all parts of schools, all different political persuasions, all different economic status, all different races, and to take that meal together when all over the world they're saying, our people don't eat with those people. And Jesus says, my people eat together and my people come from all people. And so I was really struck by how significant that makes communion. And number two to that, of course, I was thinking, if you really want to get to know someone, eat together. It gives you a chance to talk. I, I really encourage you. Now, I know people don't have people in their homes like they used to. And we don't have potlucks like churches used to. Okay, if you don't want to do it that way, that's okay. Everybody meet at a restaurant together. If you want to include a lot of people, make it a cheap restaurant so nobody feels like they can't afford. Take people out to eat as an expression of love and fellowship. Take people out that are your friends that you need to visit with. Take people out that you don't know so you'll get to know them. It's a great way to read. I do a lot of Bible studies and Jesus stories over meals with people. And so the more I thought about that, I just thought what a powerful and amazing God we have to say, I know that people will divide. They won't even do the fellowship of a meal. My people, not with those people. And he says, I draw my people from all people and we will eat together. The communion feast around the table of Jesus that we do at least weekly to remind ourselves that Jesus died for us and that he shed his blood for our sins and he's coming back. And then the meals we eat together because we love each other. Well, this is Steve Ridgell thinking, I'm going to go invite somebody to lunch and fellowship.